Pouce. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Calvin and you join me with a very special video today. I've finally been able to figure out how to film some good arc shots so you're going to have plenty of them in this week's video. With that being said, let's kick this off. So what you see me doing here is tacking together a 12 inch T and I like to make all my pipe on the table. I just find having a flat surface makes everything a lot more easier to level. A piece like this without a table, you're putting it on V stands and just turns into a nightmare. When it's on the table, I can use a square to make sure the 45 is sitting flat and level and I can use the flat edge of the table making sure that it's all aligned and the pipe alignment is correct. And then now I can just stand it up, level off the 45 to the length of the pipe and then move it over to my um, captain's wheel to roll it out. Pretty simple. So I'm about to root it now and for the root I'm doing a short circuit arc. The machine is set up on a synergic root setting so I just control the amps. So for this case it's 140 amp and the wire and volts are displayed on the screen. The wire I'm using is 1mm solid core wire and I'm going to display the gas that I'm using here now. So the technique I use to root this is I'm trying to keep my torch as high as possible to the pipe, as high to 12 o'clock as possible while aiming the wire to hit the front of the molten pool. So I'm always moving forward without blowing through or, or depositing excess metal which is going to drip its way through. For this weld, I welded it in quarters because originally this video was only going to be a one butt weld video and I was just going to take a lot of time to show you how to do it properly but I kind of thought let me, let me show you the rest of the pipe because I'm trying to steer away from being a tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing I just know how to weld and everything I've learned on the job I've gotten good at I'm by no means an expert when it comes to um, welding so I try to, to bring you a lot along my journey rather than me telling you a lot how to do it because I'm sure there's people out there who have to weld to um, better specifications than me. Um, what I'm doing is only for heating and ventilation, it's, it's a class 2 job. I can miss 25 mil of root every 100 mil, so it's not as strict as some of you guys so that's why I'd rather just show you a lot what I do and then you lot can take away from it what you lot want rather than me telling you how it should be done. With that being said, now I move on to my cap. So I rooted it all the way around, I cleaned up the two corner edges of the root in case there's any lack of fusion, and now I'm capping it at 240 amps pulse. Now the pulse welding allows me to have a huge molten pool with a lot of heat in it and a lot of penetrating powers, while also being able to um, keep it in position so it doesn't drip out. I'm coming up to my start stop now, my tie-in. So what I like to do is, go over it about an inch, half an inch, just to make sure that there isn't no pinholes on the start and stop. It's very easy to get them if you, if you don't go over it enough and put enough heat to melt the start stop. But I'm gonna go back and grind that off after, just to make sure I've got no pinholes and also the job specifications want us to do that. So the root came out really nice. There's just one spot right here. Now that's my own fault, I didn't grind back enough on my tie-ins, but like I said it's only a class 2 so all four of my tacks can look like that and I'll still pass, it's not a problem. When we do the welding test that's a different story, I do an x-ray class 1 welding test and that has to be 100% all the way through, but the job specifications is only class 2 so it's more relaxed. And you quickly see me use the tape measure to measure a weird spot. I was just making sure that I'd be able to spin this pipe. Because at this point here, from the drawing, now everything's getting real and it's starting to look big. And I was just wondering, is this going to be too big to roll? But my rollers can go, I can roll at least 1.4 meters and this was 1.2. So it's getting up there, but I can still roll it. Anytime you deal with 45, you always want to put them on. Um, horizontally so I've done that now I've flipped it over and I'm using my level and some shims to just level all of it together and then I can move on to the next step and that is making sure the set is correct before welding it together 
So you're going to see me raise the pipe up with my crane and then just measure from the top of the pipe to the top of the T is the same measurement as centre to centre. Same way from the table to the bottom of the pipe, you'll see that in a second, is centre to centre too. Now I don't want to hear in the comments about how I'm an amateur because I tack onto the pipe. I don't like how people completely dismiss all my skills purely based because I tack on the pipes. If your company or where you work for doesn't allow you to tack on the pipes, don't. My place does, so I do. And right now, the infrastructure in our place, if we had to stop tacking on the pipes, it would be a big struggle. We have nothing set up, we have no manipulators, we turn everything by hand, all on rollers, so it's essential that we tack onto the pipe, otherwise we can't do our job properly. Now I'm going to quickly buzz up these two butt welds. I've got them um, tacked in four corners and I'm going to weld quarter to quarter and I'm going to use my 5 inch grinder, cut the tacks away and then my 9 inch grinder to feather the edges and uh, so my tie-ins are better. So it usually takes around 15 minutes to root and cap um, one of these 12 inch butt welds, so that's half an hour of welding right there. Now I'm on the home straight, I just have to cap the two of them. Now, um, now my positioning for the cap um, is at 12 o'clock, I want the molten pull to solidify, turn solid at 12 o'clock, um, that way there you get a nice cap to it. If you're too low, it solidifies and the weld's flat. And if you're too high, it almost wants to drip over itself and then you get a very pointy cap. I've got a few techniques for my tie-ins. Usually, I like to pick my elbow up so I can focus the heat more at the start-stop so it melts that away and it doesn't give me any pinholes. And then I also weave back and forth sometimes. I like to gouge some of the metal out and then replace the metal. That way there you get a lot more penetration. If this was a weld test, I would weld half and half and I would grind my um, start and stop so my tie-ins are nice and smooth. But like I said, it's only class two, so it's okay. So now this first piece is done, you can see why I was measuring it earlier because now I've got to rotate that on the rollers and I was worried that it was just going to touch the ground. But I can move on and start putting on the pieces on the side. The two V stands do a good job at aligning up the pipe. I just rub my hands around the sides of it just to make sure that the pipe alignment's good and then I can put my tack on the top. Then it's as simple as adjusting the V-stand, making sure the two levels are good, and then tacking it on. If you've ever used V-stands, you know how important it is to lock them out when you're adjusting the height. Here, I adjust the height and I don't lock it out. So, it falls off of the, off of the V stands. Luckily for me, it doesn't land on anything, but that's the, that's the price you pay when you wanna be stupid. You should always lock the V stands out and you should always keep um, vulnerable things like the hose out of the way because I think it's like four or 500 pound for a replacement hose anytime you drop a pipe on it. Luckily for me, in all my years, I haven't broken one. At least I don't think I have, but I know some people they've gone through three, four of them in a month. So 
So now I can level off the pipe horizontally. I'm just going to match the T as well as the small sliver of pipe on the end all together, put some tacks on it, and then I can finally move on to flanging it up. Depending on how I'm feeling and how much work I've got done during the day, I would either weld up all the butt welds first and then flange it at the end, or in this case here, I'm going to put the final four tacks on and then I'm going to do the butt weld as well as the flanges at the same time. Um, if you do anything under 6 inch there is a chance of it pulling so you would want to weld it all together first and then flange it but because this is 12 inch pipe it's big enough it doesn't pull I'm going to um, flange it all together and do the butt welds in one go I just find it easier then I can focus on just welding a whole bunch of pieces rather than welding it and going back to leveling it off and then flanging it after I'm measuring up the overall length of the pipe. The chop list gives a 15mm hang on flanges either side. So if where is 15.5, I'll do one side 15, one side 16. It's not a problem. But say the fittings aren't perfect, my gap isn't perfect, the pipe's too long or short, then I would um, compensate for how long the measurements need to be. And then now I'm gonna pull the flanges out, the 16mm for this side, and then the 15mm for the other side. So the chalk mark allows me to mark where the flange is getting pulled out. I put the line on the back and then later on when I'm actually tacking the flanges on I know exactly where to pull it to because sometimes you may not always tack it together straight after you measure it out. I may get distracted, I may do anything and I just find it easier that way. So here's a perfect example now you can see the flange uh, moving all over the place and then I lean the flange backwards so that it opens up a gap at the top so when I tack it and then pull it out with my thumb it gives it an even gap the whole way around the pipe to the flange now without the mark on the back you can move a couple mil forwards or backwards leaning the pipe backwards so that's why the chalk mark is really handy Originally I was going to tack all three flanges on and then weld it together but then I thought that flange is only going to add extra weight so my counterbalance is just going to be more ridiculous so I decided to take it off and then I can weld the two flanges, the two butt welds and then the final flange weld can be done um, out of position instead of rotating that whole mass. But rest assured I'm not hitting the face of the flange with my hammer that's got a piece of wood on the front of it so it's more of a dead dead blow hammer and I'm making sure I don't touch the face of it. A quick tip if you're ever putting tacks on and then you find that they always crackle to get a hole in it just move the torch while putting the tack don't stay in one spot because they tend to crack easily just move side to side maybe five mil even that is enough to stop the tacks from cracking now my counterbalances consist of blank flanges tacked together and then I have it sliding up and down the shaft so you can see how easy it is to get the pipe balanced. Just let go of it, find out where it settles and pull the weight in or out until it doesn't want to rotate up or down anymore. And then now I can quickly buzz up these final butt welds. focus but you can see the glow of the cap is at the 12 o'clock position I'm moving on to welding flanges now this here is probably the most difficult part because I don't have a manipulator any type of input I put into the pipe to rotate it just makes my hand move so you can see I'm resting my forearm on a V stand and I'm pointing the gun into the pipe while leaning it backwards slightly so I'm pushing the molten pull and I find that gives me the best welds and you can see how much metal the pulse welding can just pump into the gap 
and it fills up nice big gaps as well as keeps the weld nice and smooth with almost no splatter. The inside flange was welded at 260 amps and then the outside flange, usually I turn it up a bit more, um, more powerful on the torch. Anywhere from 270 to 280, anytime I start going over 300 amps on the outside flange, I realise that it's just not nice, it's not a smooth weld, it's, it's too powerful. And I think it's because at that power, you'd want to be using 1.2mm wire to get the benefits. So all it does is just throw off the nice smooth cap. So that's how it looks once it's done, nice and clean. You can't beat pulse welding when it comes to pipe. Now moving on, I've got to put my final flange on. So I'm just going to level off the pipe and then I can tack the last flange on. And I don't like double handling, so while it's in this position, I'm not going to pick it up and level it off the other orientation. Instead, I'm going to put my socket on. I made myself a square that has incremental marks of 50mm, so when I'm having to mark up my sockets, it takes no time. So I'm marking this socket at 200mm and then I'm just going to use um, the square to do a horizontal mark. My level there, I'm scraping it along the pipe while holding the level um, level basically and that puts a mark at the top dead centre and I go over it with a chalk just to make sure I can see it. Now I can just put my socket on, line it up to the crosshairs, mark around it and then burn it. I go close when I'm burning and then I raise it away from the pipe just so the sparks and splatter doesn't block any of the holes. Once it's done, I give it a clean with the grinder. Later on, I clean the inside of the pipe before taking it out of my bay. I just use a, um, a grinder to clean off all of the burrs on the inside. I have a gap all the way around the socket as well, so I have like two, three mil. And then I use my square and I have the slightest gap. So when I do my second weld, it will shrink and then pull the socket level. You have to always compensate for the shrinkage of the welds. And then level it to the next orientation. I put a tack this side and then I start welding it all the way around on the other side. You're gonna notice while I'm welding this socket on that there's gonna be a fire inside of it. That's just the excess oil that lubricates the fittings when it's being manufactured, burning off. I'm rooting it at 140 amps, the same power that I root the butt welds at. And then I'm going to cap it at 180 amps, all the way around in one go. Nothing special has to be done for these sockets. I can put two runs on it, but one's good enough. So the techniques that I use to make these pipes directly um, correlate to the way I get paid. Because everything I do has a, has a value, each one of them butt wheels I get a certain amount of money for, each flange I get a certain amount of money for, and the bigger the pipe the more money it is. So I don't like to double handle, I like to just start from the start and work my way all the way through without having to do the same thing twice, whether that be leveling off the pipe twice or in this case here, um, I didn't want to put the flange on, pick it up, check the levels, tack it how I'm doing it now and then bring the pipe back down in order to put the socket on. So now the socket's on and the pipe's up in the air, it's completely done. I didn't double handle, I didn't have to backtrack. Now I can move on to the next step which is rolling it over so I can weld the down hand flange. Here is going to be welded at around 260 amps. Um, same, most of my powers, because of um, the pulse is so versatile, most of my powers are almost the same. And then now the downside's done, I can clean off the pipe, put it on the floor, 
and then weld the insides again at around 260 amps and the reason why I say around when I'm working I'll turn the power up or down depending on how the weld the molten pool is responding if there's a lot of heat in the pipe I can turn the power down if I want to move faster turn it up if I'm in a good position I can turn it up all these things um, they change on the fly but for the most part everything kind of has the same sort of power that I start off at now that's the final weld this was a bit of a long pipe it took me a, a few hours to make but it's finally finished um, follow my Instagram if you want to see more clips and videos and stuff that I do at work I post things on there daily so you'd get a better insight as to what I do for work but with that being said, I will check you lot in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.